In 2004, the Williams family were in court on an almost weekly basis. Carl, can you please tell us anything about what's happened? Carl, do you know that... Tagging along in her pram and desperately sucking her dummy was Dakota. You can see those pictures of your mum sort of scurrying away and uh, tucking you under her arm. Did you ever ask your mum, you know, what's going on? How no. come all these people are pointing cameras at us? No, not really. No, which is surprising. I never really asked. <laughs> I don't know why, I just didn't. Perhaps all those visits to court rubbed off more than anyone realised. Because ironically, 14 years later, Dakota's dream is to become a criminal lawyer. I was doing work experience with a lawyer. He was a good friend of my dad's, so he was like good to work with, as he knew my family and he knew me since I was little. So I would go into courts and watch cases and it all just seemed really interesting. I was just really intrigued in it all. Is it more difficult, do you think, to follow that path with, with the way you've been brought up? Um, no, I don't think so. I just think it would make it probably better because I would... Um, already have these supportive people around me, all the lawyers, things like that, the people my mum knows, my dad knew, so it would make it a lot easier. Except that you would be absolutely on the right side of the law. Yeah. <laughs> yep, Carl Williams is her dad and Roberta Williams is her mum. But that doesn't mean that she can't go along and make a great future for herself and become, like we said, a prosecutor or a um, criminal lawyer. Something good. Yeah, what are we going to do? Not allow her to be a member of the bar because she's Roberta and Carl Williams' daughter? What That'd be discrimination, wouldn't it? It's March 23, 2004, and Carl is yet again in court. The Williams family are out in force. There's Dakota's mum, her uncle Andrew, even Dakota's grandma turns up. Mr. Williams, how does it feel to be released on bail? Oh, of course, uh, over the moon. Should never have been there in the first place. Carl parades his daughter in front of the media scrum. But by that afternoon, Dakota's uncle Andrew was dead, shot by another underworld figure, Mick Gatto, in self defence. My brother, as far as I'm concerned. That's it, Dad. Yeah. You liked him a lot, didn't you? Loved Andrew. Andrew was my everything. Yeah, he was my everything. We were very, very close. How close? Close, not as others would like to say, um, and their misconceptions of our relationship. But yeah, we were very close, very close. Did everything together. So when he got shot? It was on your birthday, wasn't it? Yeah, it was my birthday, 23rd of March. My whole world just fell apart. I was, yeah, worst day of my life, Nelly. Did you say to Carl then, listen, this is getting out of control? We sort of went our separate ways, kind of then. In June 2004, three months after Andrew's murder, Carl was arrested again, and this time charged with conspiracy to murder. I don't know. I'm going to speak to the lawyers now to find out. Eventually, he was charged with four murders, although police suspected him of more. In 2007, he pleaded guilty to three of them and was sentenced to 35 years jail. This, in our view, makes him one of the worst serial murders in the history of Victoria. I would visit my dad and that was just like a normal thing. What, every weekend going to jail? Yeah. And you just thought as the kid, what, this is what all kids do? No, I didn't think that. I just thought for me, like, that's just normal. Dakota was just three when she started visiting her dad in jail. She has no memory of her father ever living at home. How did you explain to her, as a mum, yeah. that her dad was in jail? I didn't. I never did, Liam. I never... Um, explained anything. I just 
went with the flow and... She must have said at some point, hey, Mum, how come... No. We're going to this prison. No, she never did. I knew he wasn't home. I knew where he was. But it just didn't really cross my mind to think that of a time when he would be home. What do you remember most about visiting him in jail? I remember one time there used to be a whiteboard in one room and I would just play teachers, things like that. And what sort of things did he say to you on those visits? Um, make sure I'm going to school, um, brushing my teeth, <laughs> being nice to my mum. He would always be really pedantic with that. Make sure I'm being really nice to my mum, treating her well. That was the main thing. Do you recall ever saying, Dad, why can't you come with us? Oh, I remember one time I was, like, planning it. I was like, let's get a helicopter and we'll put it on the roof and you can come with us and... That would have gone down a treat, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> At one point, both Carl and his dad, Dakota's grandfather George, found themselves together in the big house. Pretty sure I visited them both at the same time once. Dear Dakota, well, hello there, my beautiful daughter. How are you? Good Apart from the contact visits, the father-daughter relationship blossomed on paper. This is from my eighth birthday. Dakota, you mean the world to me. You are my gorgeous little princess who keeps me going through difficult times, and I love you with every inch of my heart, always and forever, your dad. Has he written you a poem there? No, that one's from my grandpa. What does he say? Um, you are my one and only grandchild whom I love and idolise. Baby girl, you are the best and loved so much. You don't... So don't ever, ever forget that. Love always, Pop. <laughs> I think you must have been the only kid in the world to get a, two letters in one day from a father and a grandfather in the same <laughs> prison. <laughs> It's, I mean, it's almost a soap opera, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But lovely to receive it. Yeah. As the years passed, the funerals began for Dakota at St. Teresa's Catholic Church. The first was her grandma, Carl's mum, Barbara, in December 2008. Dakota was very close to her nan. Tell me a story, tell me a story, tell me. Sixteen months later, in April 2010, Carl was murdered in Barwon Prison's maximum security unit by fellow prisoner Matthew Johnson. Dakota was just nine years old. How did you break it to Dakota that her dad was dead? I just said to her, you know how Nan's in heaven? Well, Nan wanted Dad to be with her. Dad's gone to heaven. And she said, my dad? Not my dad. On the day of her dad's funeral, Dakota and her family arrived in a hummer. Do you still remember snatches of it or...? Yeah, I still remember parts of it. News choppers filmed from the sky. Hundreds of gawkers turned up on the footpath. There was a ton of media there. Yeah, they were all standing on things to, like, see what was going on. Streets were closed and camera crews lined the perimeter of the church. The funeral was extraordinary. The gold casket, the media, it was like a requiem for the mob. Yeah, it was insane. How did Dakota it was insane. react? Well, we kind of didn't look around at what was going on. I, I can say in all honesty, I went to the church yesterday and can't even remember Carl's funeral. In all honesty, I can't remember. What have you got there, a picture of your mum and dad? Oh, uh, me and my dad. It's this footage of nine-year-old Dakota striding solemnly from the church with a photo of herself and her dad that symbolises the futility of the gangland war. The notoriety, the drugs, the gangland stuff, the, your life, has it all been worth it? No. No. I hear people say often, do you miss the money, do you? No, I wouldn't take it back for the world. Destroyed my life, destroyed my world. 
and I wouldn't take it back for nothing on this earth. So if you had your time over again? I'd do things very, very differently. You wouldn't want to be part of it? No. The only great thing is my kids, I've got them and they keep me moving forward. But I didn't pick you as someone who would have regrets. Yeah, not usually, but in this I've got to look at it like that because look at all that's happened. Regrets not only for myself, for others. Coming up, Dakota's search for answers. Everyone like deserves to know the truth. It's been eight years since Carl was murdered in the maximum security unit here at Barwon Prison. Who ordered the hit on Carl? Me and Mum like discuss it all the time. I always say to her, like, it's just still so odd what happened. It just doesn't make sense to me. What do you think happened? That's next on 60 Minutes. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.